I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my everyday life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I'm out here in a lot of very cold rain. It's probably in the 70s in the air, but the rain coming down feels like it's in the 50s. This is the chilliest I've been in Nicaragua in quite a long time. We're on the south side of the Tropical Depression, Sarah, or Tropical Storm, Sarah, that's nearly a hurricane. Everybody's calling it a hurricane. It's not actually up in Honduras and Belize. We're getting the back swirl of it as we tend to out here. So I'm gonna take today and do a little showing you guys around of what it's like being here in Leon in what we get of hurricanes. A lot of people ask me what hurricanes are like here, and this is the second biggest one that we've had since I've lived here. So we're gonna drive around Sutiava and Laborio in Leon. We're gonna take you down to the river uh, and just give you an idea of what it's like around town. Today's not super bad, and we didn't go to the worst parts of town, and we didn't go out in the strongest rain because there that would get pretty stupid. I was supposed to be in Managua today. The highway was impassable at its Sapa. Uh, we, the car wouldn't be able to get through. The big trucks were struggling to get through. So we didn't go anywhere. We're just hiding out here. There's flooding Chinandega, Leon, La Paz Centro, uh, lots of places, quite a bit. And uh, we're going to have some pictures posted on our community here so you can see some of what we're getting from the news around the country. Here, it wasn't too bad, but we're just going to take you around the city so you can see what it's like when people say, oh, we're getting a hurricane in Leon. This will give you a bit of an idea. So let's get to that right after the bump. All right, today we're gonna do a bit of just driving through Leon. We're gonna show you what we discovered as we run around the city. A lot of people have been asking me about hurricanes and major storms here in Nicaragua and what it's like and how bad is it and how often are we affected by hurricanes and with Tropical Storm Sarah being nearly a hurricane and really impacting us already for a couple days and today being really impactful. I was supposed to be in Managua, was unable to go because the Itzapa uh, um, and Palma was impassable today. That's a difficult sentence to say, Itzapa and Palma impassable. Uh, so it was so deep underwater um, and I'm gonna have pictures on our community so you can see what some of the flooding is like around the country. Uh, we were unable to go to Managua. So we were here in Leon today and since I was here, I had to run some errands. Uh, out to Sutiava, so Ida came with me and uh, decided to turn on the camera and just go through a bit of Leon and show you uh, what things are like. Now, in reality, Leon is not too bad today. Uh, we do get a bit of flooding, not so much out here. You can see there's a lot of water there on the side, like, and that's that's me avoiding it, right? Like there, there really is a lot of water. And the rain has been steady for days. So we've had occasionally little breaks in the rain, never any sun, uh, but it is dark. And, and this is probably noonish that we're, that we're out, to, probably before, it's probably 11, uh, it was before lunch, and uh, it, it's pretty dark. Uh, and it's been just continuously like this. And so the rain will get really light, like you see here, and then it'll get really pouring uh, back and forth. And so there are times that it's really flooded uh, and then times it's not. So it, it really does ebb and flow literally throughout the day. So it's a little bit of precaution. You just pay attention to the rain. You're mostly okay. But someone just commented on my channel that their family was unable to get from one side of Leon to the other just now in the evening. I'm doing this audio recording probably about 11 hours after I did the video recording and uh, hopefully just a little bit before you guys see it. So we're coming into the main Barrio Sutiava here. That was the University La Salle uh, on the left. We're going to be coming up on uh, Calasans pretty soon. I'll try to point out so you can figure out where we are on the map. That's the cemetery on the left that they just painted in the last few weeks, so it's much more colorful than it used to be. This is the, the school grounds of Calisans on the left. The main school building will be coming up, the big church here on the right. That's what that is. And then right after it, you can't really tell, but that's, a, that's another private school. So there's a private university and two private high schools right there. And this is the itty-bitty community of San Mateo, and that's the main Calisans uh, school buildings there on the left there you can really see it that's the upper road in San Mateo uh, and then we uh, just went by uh, or, or just about to go by 17th Street that should be the 17th Street turn right there on the right and this is 
this is really Sutiava downtown now, and we're coming into Marcadito. Uh, so the roads here, so they've been doing a lot of repairs over the last uh, week or so, uh, but the the rainy season has been super rough on the roads this year. So terrible potholes all over uh, and just all over the city, like literally everywhere. So they've been trying to fix those, uh, but it's, it's just a lot and the rain is still coming. So we've had a lot of new ones in the last couple days and this storm is definitely gonna bring us a lot of new ones, a lot of like manhole covers will blow off from back pressure pressure in the in the the water system and it gets it gets pretty rough but you can see there's still a lot of people out and a lot of people out biking which is super fun in in a whole bunch of rain a lot of times they're up to their pedals in water uh, as they go places so uh, we really got lucky that there's no place that was so bad on this drive sometimes you drive out through here and, and you can't get through because of the amount of water uh, so this was actually pretty good but this is only the second heaviest hurricane that we've experienced in the nearly four years that we've lived here continuously now so we really don't get that much okay i want to point out that stick that we just went by on the right that is a new pothole cropped up this morning and someone went out with a post and put a flag into it so people wouldn't because it'll fill up with water and, and it wasn't there yesterday so someone driving through will easily go through and be like oh there's just a little wet spot and they'll they'll go through and, and destroy their car because some of those are pretty pretty deep that's dr coffee right there on the right uh, that we talk about quite often on the show uh, so we're deep in sutiava now we just went past the church just before uh dr coffee we're heading towards the uh the semaphoro the the street light that separates sutiava from leon proper uh, and you can see the roads are wet uh there's a lot of standing water but we really don't have flooding out here at this point so we're, we're pretty good and uh this was this was a fun day we had a good time going out and doing some exploring we are going to take you guys by the uh because especially james has asked a number of times what's the status on the new market that's being built the new uh, bus terminal and market replacing marketito and there's a new road we've we got a hint of that today that they're going to do a through road so that it connects to the road that we're on as well as uh, sixth street by the airport uh, so it's going to have a pass through which is very very good and it goes right by a hotel there's a nice hotel out there on one of the worst roads you've ever seen and that's going to turn into one of the roads for uh, the buses so that's going to improve things a lot and it's going to make that hotel actually usable because right now anyone who stays in that hotel you have to have a four by four quite literally to get in and out of it i don't even know if a four by four could make it to it at this point it's it's really like a like an all-wheel drive hilux would truly struggle uh, to get there. This is our, they call it the Texaco, but it's actually an Uno. Uh, so if anyone ever gives you directions and says Texaco, that is the place that they mean uh, in, in Sutiava, the one gas station in Sutiava. Uh, and this is what it's like driving through Sutiava. There's always a tricycle popping out in front of you and navigating around them is a lot of fun and uh, makes it rather stressful and slow getting everywhere. And you can tell there's very little room like you really are squeezing by at times and then every intersection you're hitting a lot of water and there you go this is um pharmacy row that there's like so i think i counted 11 pharmacies in like a two block area i can't figure out why but every pharmacy you could possibly want every chain some private ones ones that claim they're open 24 hours but definitely are not everything's closed by I, th I think 11 in this stretch you have to go downtown to anything else that's where we just stopped at the super express this is the band pro on the right this is the the light separating sutiava from leon so we're going to turn right and head deep into uh sutiava going down the hill this is where we first start to get to really see water you can see there's a bit of water on the road here it's still raining a little bit that guy nearly walked into the car he just kept walking and was going to slam into the car but you'll notice we go downhill a lot here so this is where the water starts flowing down the road and it starts getting a lot harder to control now earlier in the day we saw some shots from down here that the water was over a meter deep going in front of the houses on fourth street that we're going to turn on to and it's definitely not like that when we get here but it is pretty bad it is awfully heavy so uh it's just you need to be careful when you're when you're driving in a city like leon with uh with a lot of water out there because you can there can be surprises there can be potholes underneath the water you can see all along the right where that car is sitting like there that's all um at least a couple inches underwater so it's not bad but you don't know what's under there 
He's got to be careful. Okay, so this is fourth we're going to turn on to here. This is actually the road I used to live on when I lived in La Barrio. And notice how much water there is here. The people in front of us on the bikes, like they're all underwater. But it's not too bad. It's not flowing down this road. This entire road was underwater uh, just a few hours before we were shooting this. This is why we wanted to come down here and see how bad it was at this time of day. Um, but this is, you know, this is after three days of rain. And we're out here in the, the hurricane rain. We have almost no wind, so that's really great. Um, the bigger hurricane that we had two, three years ago uh, had quite a bit of wind associated with it and more rain, so, so quite, quite noticeably more flooding. But um, this is really not bad. Throughout the day, uh, we've gone through. And last night, we went to Yellow Alert Nationwide. Um, but we're not getting too many reports of problems. So I think it's it's mostly being absorbed because it's a long, slow, steady rain. So it's not horrible. But um, w throughout the day, we go between the city being flooded and impassable, and then the rain lets up, and it clears relatively quickly. Uh, and then when it rains, it comes back. It, it can the, the flooding is basically all flash flooding. This is La Barrio. This is where uh, most of the episodes of 2022 were shot right in this little block here around the church. If you're coming up on the church, if we were to back up, there's a Super Express just before the church. The Super Express is my old house. Not next to it, not near it. I actually lived in the house that became the Super Express. So if anybody ever wants to go have a little tour this little section you go to that super express and get yourself a drink and that's like your your pilgrimage to the house where uh, the show really started to become popular and then go to the church right next to it and uh, stand in the churchyard that's where i filmed more episodes than anywhere else in 2022 it's really where kind of got the whole thing under our feet um, and then you come down here and we'll show you after we go through some of this another iconic spot but notice as we come through here See where that is uh, marked off there on the left? That is a massive pothole that formed over the last 48 hours, and they had to cover up. And then there's this river running through here. And part of that is, uh, you can't really see it. We just went over it. A manhole cover blew off, and this is storm drain flowing up out of the storm drain and down the street. On the left, that's Maxi Pali in La Barrio. That is the Walmart grocery store plus a little bit of extra stuff. Uh, and we go there pretty often. This is the one that we use even now that we live in Sutiava, we come over to this one because Sutiava has a poly, but not a maxi poly. So we still come to this. Now we're going to turn right here. We're not going super far. This is, um, I believe this is 6th Street. Uh, just in front of us is the river. We're going to see that later. This park on the left is the Parque Galicia. This is the park that I did more recordings in than, than any other park in 2022. So if you're uh, doing kind of the, the pilgrimage, this is kind of the little circuit. That was my local grocery store and my local park, my house, and the church that I did all my filming at. And probably for 2022, over 50% of all episodes were shot between those three places, most likely. Um, so if you ever want to see them and just kind of be like, oh yeah, now I, now I recognize all those spots, uh, that I, that I filmed in, um, it, 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 it's kind of interesting, I guess. There's so many dogs, something about when it rains, there are so many dogs on the road. Notice on the left, someone put out bricks to keep people from driving into a hole. You see a lot of that. People really do go out and mark as much as they can, the problems on the road to keep you safe. Um, so it's, and then on the left there, again, bricks with yellow tape. Um, you'll occasionally see the little flag sticking up. Um, and as we did it, Ida kept saying, wow, people are really putting in an effort. Like such, such good behavior that people are going out and, uh, and marking these things. So we're just a little bit above the river here. So the water gets deeper down here, um, but it's not too bad because mostly it flows because because of the, the steep hill, it flows from the right side to the left pretty briskly as you go the other side of town actually higher in town the elevation changes much less and there the streets much more likely fill up and and go into the doorways here the water keeps flowing downhill to the river um, but up there it's easy for it to get stuck in the roads and and with this amount of rain that area is probably nearly impassable. And when people said they couldn't get across town, it's probably because of the roads up there, not the ones down here. Some of the ones down here can get a lot of flowing water. Like this intersection, we noticed how bad this was as we came up. There's a, that's a whole area on the left 
and in front of us there's bits that are marked off like huge areas and we can see a mess off to the right um, and it's flowing off to the left so we're actually Ida just looked at me and she's like let's pull over and film this we got to show people what this is like so we're gonna hop out of the car and actually walk around a little bit this is the corner of sixth and eighth there's Ida and uh, say hello and uh, you, there you can see it's not super deep but that's a lot of water in the intersection um, that's probably yeah three inches uh, when we stepped off into it um, so yeah, it gets it gets a little bit rough <laughs> and uh, you know the biggest thing is you just can't see but the, remember look how light this rain is at this time this really is not bad um, and when it when it picks up just a little bit this water doubles or triples and, and can do so in two or three minutes. So that's where it gets a little bit rough. But this is what we get in Leon. When people are talking about hurricanes in Leon, this is the stuff that you're worried about. Of course, now this at night, far more dangerous. This, this becomes invisible. Uh, but during the day, you know, you can see everything. Nothing's dangerous. Everything that, you know, traffic moves slow. Uh, you're not going to be slamming into people. You're not going to get swept away. Now, if you're on foot, if you have children, you do want to be careful. Every so often, children will be swept away because, you know, this water's low. But if this was three times as high and the rain was really coming down, um, things do get really slippery. It's easy to trip on things and it is possible to get swept into the streets. Uh, and, and the streets do at some points go into the drainage like you can kind of see after the, those kids really wanted to say hi they were very excited we were there um and uh, it is possible to get swept into the rivers uh and so you you do want to be cautious to some degree but but for the most part it's uh it's, it's not that bad um so you know if you're out for a walk this is a lot of water in the street and if you're driving it can be a little bit problematic and of course it causes a lot of road damage it is not good for the health of the roads but it is not something to be scared of it's not a reason to to be wary of living in a city like leon or anything like that like this is not highly impactful to our lives other than having to navigate around it so here they roped it off they roped off the entire road and you can see just how these are potholes that have formed probably in the last one to three days and uh, that's going to take some work to repair. They got to bring out a crew and actually put all those pavers back. And, and you know, they're all over the place. Uh, and we're going to go up to this intersection up here. We're really close to where we turned down. When we came down the road and turned left onto 4th, that's actually right in front of us. That was at 8th and 4th. This is 8th and 5th that we've just come back up to from 6th. And I was going to show you. Now, you can see, you're going to see a lot of garbage now. Um, and the reason is, is that this area being so low in the city, when there's storms like this, all the trash in the city flows down to these fences and grates and such. Um, so that, that is why this area, the upper parts of the city has almost no trash and the lower parts of the city is absolutely appalling. And it's because of weather like this, when the water is flowing through the streets, any piece of trash on the street, Here's a little restaurant just showing you Chancho Canyuca Vero. And uh, they're open. They were open right there when I was there. Um, but as you can tell, if you had, you know, a plastic bag or, you know, just any kind of normal trash, it would just get swept away in this water and it's going to just keep going until it gets caught on something. And that's where the fences tend to catch it. And if they don't catch it, then it's going to be going into the river or whatever. So that is, we tried to explain. Obviously, there's a lot of challenges to the litter problems. The first thing is we got to get people to stop littering, and they're working on that, and that's starting to happen. Uh, but then we need to deal with how trash is going to be handled. Uh, that's Ida hiding there. It turns out with her cousin uh, underneath <laughs> the the uh, thing there, and she's not even she didn't even grow up in this town, <laughs> which is funny. Um, yeah, but family everywhere, everyone's related in Nicaragua. It's it's very funny. Uh, and uh, the dogs, of course, go looking for trash. And so even if you have nice organized bags or whatever, they'll tear it open. And then they only eat the food, obviously. They're not eating the plastic, so they leave the plastic strewn about. Storm comes along, and all that trash gets swept along. Where is it going to go? So there's a lot of pieces that have to come together um, to really deal with this in Nicaragua, especially in a city like Leon. We have the, the water flowing through the streets problem. 
We have the, the litter problem. That's certainly the first thing that has to be handled. We have to organize the trash first before we can do anything else. Um, then we need to organize finding ways to reliably get the trash off the ground um, and collected from things that dogs and weather cannot get to, which is very difficult. We have great trash pickup. The municipality does a great job of collecting the trash that it can and sends people out to clean up the streets all the time. That, that's a major job in the city is going out and cleaning stuff up. So people are doing that all the time. I know it seems like it's just being ignored. That is not at all the case. It is that it is such an extreme logistical challenge to actually come up with a way to reduce the trash to a point where it isn't a problem. And with a booming population, uh, that uh, challenges everything as well. A lot of the, you know, the city was never designed to have this many people living in it, uh, and so there's there's a lot of tough things there as well. Now the the main river is in front of us down the hill, uh, but I wanted to run over here. I love this little side street, and there's a couple places we're going to see here where you can tell if it wasn't for the trash, if you were able to clean up the waterways and make the trash go away with minimal effort, you'd have truly beautiful locations. Now, of course, the houses in these spots are nothing uh, special. Um, they're, they're not even mediocre because these are extremely poor neighborhoods battling trash. But this is beautiful, lush, green uh, over a cute little hard cut gorge. And yeah, that's all trash flowing into it, right? So that just ruins it. And you can know the water. Now, the water is going to be muddy because it's a flood. Um, that's not necessarily pollution. That's a lot of just dirt, right? So that's that's fine. Um, and you don't smell anything when you're out there. It smells clean. You can see you have this beautiful deep cut of a little tiny river going through. Yes, that's someone moving moving trash to be recycled. Um, and then that's a lot of water flowing through there. That's not the river. That's just a little uh, ditch that's that's feeding. But that is a beautiful spot. So if you didn't have that trash and it was just this beautiful foliage and this beautiful flowing water, having a house on this cute little lane against that would be amazing. And Ida was like, this place is so cute. Um, and she knew these people that were there too as well. It's completely hilarious that these were random. Uh, and the guy that we just walked past, he just we paused the camera for a second. But the guy came up and said hello, and he actually works out on the beach in one of the restaurants that we know. And it's like, oh, this is his street. So funny. Um, but some of these areas, they just if if we could just get them cleaned up, they'd actually gentrify in in a heartbeat. Like just really cute spots and, and handy parts of town. Um, so we're going to wake our way down the road. I wanted to walk down here, and Ida was very excited to come down because um, the the Rio Chiquita, the Rio Chiquito is is down here um, a bit, and and the, we can show kind of where the majority of the water from the city ends up as it's flowing. And you'll notice that this part on the road where it's not going through uh, earth cut uh, drains is quite clear. At one point, I saw a guy get out and bathe in the road. Um, but not naked or anything. He just had something on his arms and he jumped in and there's Ida just going through the water. <laughs> this is her family. Completely randomly saw her family sitting outside, so she ran over to see cousins or aunts or something. Uh, and uh, But you can see how deep this water is flowing down the road. And we're going to show you over there on the right. Uh, I think we're going to teleport over there pretty quickly. Over there on the right is, yeah, there it is. Um, there's a pretty serious ditch over there. So this is a, a little, if you can see the motorcycle coming up, you can see how steep this is. And it really is like a little cascade <laughs> going down. Uh, it makes a wonderful sound, but it's not great for driving or walking. And it's, it is a lot of water uh, flowing at a, at a very brisk pace. So you can see just what it looks like when the trucks go through it. And over to the right, the water is flowing heavily into a deep ditch with with a lot of water in it there's light again and uh so there is quite a bit of drainage there's just so much water going down the hills so that's that's one of our big challenges you can see people a little dirt path off into another neighborhood there on the left and uh but uh you know most of this and and that's i just wanted to show drainage coming out of a building um, there, there's so much of that throughout the city. Just, you know, building lots needing to to drain uh, to keep their hydrology safe, and uh, that's a lot of a lot of water moving through there, right? So we're getting lower and lower as we get closer to the river. You can kind of see the bridge in front of us. 
But even in the hurricanes, right? Like this is not weather to worry about. This is the, some of the worst parts of the city, some of the most dangerous parts of the city. Uh, now I have uh, three years ago in the in the heavier hurricane, I came out and filmed quite late at night in some of the same areas, and it was much worse. And still, not that big of a deal. Interesting, kind of exciting. Had to be really careful driving around, but the number of times you have to be really careful driving, very few. Amount that this would actually impact you if you lived here, quite minor. Um, the biggest impact today uh, for us has been that um, Pedidos Ja, the, the food delivery service, uh, shut down for the day. They're not having anyone deliver, so everyone's got to cook at home or go out to restaurants or whatever. So, you know, not a very big deal by any stretch of the imagination, but it's real. Um, these fences to catch the trash on the right have, since we first moved here, those didn't have all those flowers and, and vines on them. Now they do, and they're gorgeous. And look at how much trash flows through the openings. Now, some of this is that the uh, fence has failed. If the fence stayed, all of that trash would have been caught and would have been cleaned up on the street, but instead it flowed through where it could and collects in the ravine um, as it makes its way down to the river. And you can kind of see there's like a ravine through there with, with some trash in it and water flowing. But the actual river is so much lower. We're going to see it here in just a minute as we walk out onto the bridge. So this is the 8th Street Bridge. And there you can see the Chiquito, which is not so Chiquito today. That, that's a lot of water. And this is one of the most beautiful parts of the city. This is where if we could stop the trash and get that water to be clean, obviously, again, storm runoff is going to be dirty. Uh, but when it's not storm, it's a very low volume. Then it gets noticeable pollution. If we could get that cleaned, some of these areas along the river would be the most extremely beautiful, highly desire, desirable spots of the city. And instead... These are extremely poverty-stricken zones because people don't want to live next to the river. You can see no matter where you are coming up to the river, there's always trash because just it always flows downhill. Um, but you can see where the mud's coming from. Of course, there's dirt in the streets being swept into this, but it's also flowing through, you know, natural cuts. So it's picking up dirt from uh, all the, the just hydraulic action as it comes through the city. But you can see this is we're in the heart of the city. We're right in Leon. So this deep, lush jungle setting uh, is all along the Chiquito as it cuts through the city from the center east to the southwest corner. And then it eventually flows out and goes into Las Penitas uh, a little bit outside in Isla Juan Venado. And that's the direction we came from. So we teleported back up to the uh, 6th and 8th intersection where we were. Here's Ido. <laughs> wading through the the deep intersection i'll show you i'll try to show you how deep it is as it you know it comes up to my ankle like my lower ankle it's not deep deep but uh, this is all all pretty good uh if we were up at like la colonia i guarantee it would be up to nearly my shin at least so much more water gets held on the streets up there that is the sound of geckos in my office by the way i'm recording this in my office i thought there was going to be a ton of rain as i started this it was really pouring but it mostly died down so you don't hear it uh, all right, we're going to continue um, through southern Sutiava on 6th as far as we can. Uh, and we're going to go check out the, uh, the new terminal, the new bus terminal that's going in. Um, and uh, just to give you a little preview, we're going to get stuck on 6th and have to turn around. But the, the camera is going to die. We're not going to be able to actually show that portion. Notice another intersection here, loads of water, but not a real problem. Just got to be a little bit careful, pay a little bit of attention, and you're fine. And so that's my real takeaway, right? It's interesting to see the storms. It's, it's fun to come out and deal with, you know, a moderate amount of flooding. Um, generally, we don't experience flooding that, that makes you in Leon say you can't get through. Um, it can happen, but it, it, it's quite rare. And, and even like today, it's very isolated to just really rainy parts of the day. Managua will get dangerous water flowing through certain areas, um, especially outside of the city a little bit. They'll have some rivers and, and trucks will get swept away because they decide to foolishly venture into the deep water thinking they can make it. That kind of stuff does happen in Managua, really doesn't happen in Leon, doesn't happen in most of Nicaragua. Uh, but, uh, you know, you got to be a little bit careful. But people are so concerned because... When you're, when you're not used to Nicaragua and you're looking at it on a map, 
you see it connected to the Caribbean and it must be part of the hurricane zone. And of course, technically hurricanes make landfall in, in Nicaragua, but they make landfall very far, very, very far away from the population centers. And so if you were to say, how many hurricanes does the United States get? You'd say, well, it gets lots. You say, okay, so if you're living in Iowa, how, how much do they affect you? And you'd say, not at all, ever, not one bit. And, and so the, where you are matters. And, and in Nicaragua, all the main population centers, all the big cities, the big departmentos are all on the Pacific coast, which really doesn't get hurricanes or even cyclones. Um, we get them on the Caribbean, or in this case, we're getting them up on the northern Honduran coast. And it's, it's just kind of coming out and we're getting a far flung arm of the hurricane. So, so in this case, we're getting nothing but a lot of rain. This intersection had quite a bit of water and damage to the road. So that was a little bit tough to get through, uh, but, but we're fine <laughs> moving forward. Uh, and uh, we're going to be coming along real soon. We're going to be coming along the airport. Uh, this is 6th, the southern uh, bypass through the city. We're not quite there yet, but that, that's where we're headed. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so when hurricanes hit on the Caribbean coast, that is a very, that's a 12 hour drive from where we are here. And so you have um, a large jungle zone, which only does so much to slow down the hurricane. It does not have open water, so it's not feeding the hurricane, but it's, it's relatively flat. So it's, it's not slowing it down quickly, but it is land. And then once you get through a large portion of jungle, then you hit the Cordera, the, the mountain range going through the middle of, of all of Central America. Um, and technically it's like connected to the Rockies and that mountain range, while not super high, is certainly high enough to dramatically disrupt a hurricane. And then when you're coming out to the, uh, to the main portions of populated Nicaragua, you are generally one to four hours west of those mountains. So the mountains have basically wiped out any possibility of the hurricane actually having any force. And here's a big drop down <laughs> on 6th Street. It's quite a bit of uh, elevation drop all of a sudden. And, um, and then with many hours distance from the mountains out to most of the cities, Managua, Granada, uh, Leon, Chinandega, and so forth, by the time the hurricane pressure system and the hurricane winds and the hurricane rains get to us, we tend to have potentially a small amount of wind. This is the airport right here on the corner on the left. Uh, you can see there's a fence up there and it's elevated. The runway is just kind of by those buildings up there. And then all along as we drive this, uh, we will, for the rest of the drive, have the airport next to us. This road deteriorates very quickly, as you will see. We start having to navigate pretty pretty hard to, to make it down the road. We're in a Toyota Corolla here, so it's not the best for getting through on rough roads, um, but we mostly did okay. And uh, so what we get is, is very rarely we will be affected by a hurricane. When we are, the effect is very minor uh, with, with the, poss the biggest possibility just being a lot of rain, and that's what we have going on now. And of course, a lot of rain could be dangerous in some cases. There can be flash floods. Uh, up in the mountains, there can be mudslides. There has been, uh, at one, one time, quite a long time ago, uh, there was a hydraulic action on a volcanic uh, uh, shoulder, and the volcanic ground gave way from the water underneath the volcanic soil, and it slid down and destroyed a village, uh, which is essentially a mudslide, but there's a different name for it when it's volcanic ash. And it wasn't an active volcano. It's just the, the volcanic rocks and ash that made up the side of the, the volcano when they mix with water have a different action than normal mud, uh, so it has a different name. Um, and that was really tragic, but it was a long time ago. And you know when you're living on the side of a volcano uh, versus in a normal city. Um, so if you're in a normal populated area, right, the fear, the concerns from the hurricanes, they're zero, right? That's, that's the biggest thing. It's just you could get a big, long rainstorm anywhere. Um, so not a reason to, to be concerned in any way. When we get these things and they tell us storms are coming, we're all like, yeah, whatever. At least we know there's rain, right? Like we, nobody is concerned about it. Not a big deal. In this case, it did disrupt me driving to Managua today. But, you know, 
I probably could have taken my chances, and the worst case scenario is I would have ended up at Isapa and have to have parked there, waiting for the rain to let up, uh, and then when it was lighter and the water went down, um, get <laughs> get to the other side and continue on. But I never would have been swept away, just, just would have become impassable. So as we come along the airport here, we're going to come up on the new terminal that is being built, the new bus terminal uh, and the new market. So um, it's not as far along as I had hoped, but it is coming along quite rapidly. Uh, I thought it was going to open in November, but I think they're shooting for more like January at this point. Um, it's still unbelievable how quickly it is being built. The structure is partway up. The ground is leveled. A lot of the hard work is done. Uh, so maybe it's still going to open quite quite soon, but it feels like there is a lot left to do, uh, more than you would get done in just a few weeks. Um, but certainly some of the hardest stuff's done. Here we actually stopped. We're like, um, can we make it? I think we can make it, but the road looks a little bit where, a little bit rough. And then this bike waited for me, so I had to, I had to go. And you can see we're, we're, we're navigating a little bit, but it's, it's fine. And I was waiting for the motorcycle there. I didn't want to push them into the bad bits. So for us, for us, these heavy rains are just entertaining. They make life a little bit more interesting. Of course, out on the beach, uh, they can be really beautiful, but um, a lot of the beach area becomes impassable. Again, not dangerous, just cars won't make it through. There's a lot of mud roads like this where you can easily get stuck. You can see nothing here is dangerous in any way, of course. It's just will the car get stuck? Will we bottom out? Something like that. If I had a Hilux, none of this would be uh, even notable. We'd just be driving right through. Now, it's funny, when we get to the terminal, you'll see there was a security guard starts coming over to us, and we're like, oh, we're going to get yelled at by a security guard. And immediately he knew Ida, and they're just like, oh, hey. And he's like, hey, do you want to walk around, take pictures? We're like, no, no, we're fine. But it was it was very funny. So we had no problem uh, popping in there and doing that. And here we're coming up on it. You can see it on the right. We're, we're going to see the wall here. Pay close attention. I know the road is interesting, but you can see the structure as we drive by. That is the, the new poster up. And of course, huge pipes on the left to keep us from falling into a big hole that has formed. Um, these are the construction offices. I don't know why they have this fence here. Like, why would they block the public from view? Because it's wide open. You can just walk in on the ends. Of course, they don't want you to, but uh, I'm not sure what this wall is really accomplishing other than, I mean, they just they, they put it up and they take it down. So well, whatever, but <laughs> it seems, seems overkill. So we'll pull over here and park and walk in. And uh, I'll just show you a little bit of where it is. But I think it's coming along great. It's got so much potential. I'm very, very excited of where it's going to be. So this is, uh, we just turned around and are walking in from the, the corner we were just at. And uh, you can see the security guards starting to walk over from up there. Obviously a lot of rain. They're not like, <laughs> we're not really going to go in and fool around a lot. It's a whole bunch of mud. Um, but you can see the new walls coming like right there. It's going to be the outer fence. And then you can see the higher ground. It's going to be a big market structure up there. Uh, that's going to be um, food stalls and all kinds of shops and stuff. And a, um, we're not sure what all, but all the different things you have in the regular markets. All right, we're going to try to go forward here, but we're going to get stuck pretty quickly. And uh, as we get stuck, the camera actually dies. So we're going to just mention, uh, if you would be so kind as to like and subscribe, of course, that'd be great. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or just want to say hello, uh, get down there um, below, scroll down, and uh, leave your comments uh, on the show. We really appreciate getting a chance to talk to all of you. And if you have questions, of course, we love having things to answer. Uh, that makes my life a lot easier, being able to answer questions for you guys when I have something specific to talk about. And, uh, uh, of course, if you'd, if you'd be so interested, inclined to send in a, uh, a video of yourself um, asking questions or whatever, that would be fantastic. Telling your story of visiting Nicaragua or travel or whatever, that'd be fantastic. We'd love to put you guys on the show. All the information on how to do that and how to send it to me right down there in the show notes as well as my email if you need to reach out to me for any any reason. You can't tell too much here, but out there in front of us, that road is impassable. There is no way through, and we're nearly at the end. In the far distance, you can actually see, here, here I'm going to drive backwards. You can actually see the main road that we started on. So we're right back where we started, but just before you get to it, the road is impassable. So that was super
super inconvenient. Um, we spent a few minutes here trying to figure out what to do. Eventually uh, turned around uh, after backing way up and and drove out another way up 17th and went back on the main road that way without incident. But uh, So if you would like and subscribe, that does help. Leave comments, that helps. Watch another video after this one. Ida goes off to investigate. She's like, I'm going to go see if we can get through. The quick answer is we cannot. Uh, uh, but <laughs> definitely, if, uh, if when this is done, go and watch another video, even if you don't have time to watch it. Let it play in the background. Anything like that, that stuff really, really helps. Uh, the more episodes, the more you watch, the more you tell friends about the show, get other people uh, involved, the more it makes this show possible. And of course, we have uh, our Buy Me a Coffee, where you basically like Patreon comes directly to me and helps pay for the microphones and cameras and, and gas and all the things that it takes to do this. And that's right there on the screen and down in the show notes, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And it, literally, it says buy a coffee or three coffees or five coffees and just send your your thanks that way that's that's very much appreciated there's also a join button uh down there on the bottom left uh or if you're on a tv just hit the up uh, button on your remote and uh it's five dollars a month to join our channel membership uh which i didn't think people were going to be into but a number of people have really gotten involved in that and we have a private discussion group that you get to join when you're a member of that it's just five dollars a month which I, that's actually quite a lot so I super appreciate everyone who buys a coffee or joins the membership or watches extra episodes that you guys make all of this possible thank you so much uh for watching the show and from rainy Nicaragua, I will see all of you tomorrow. <laughs>